Dobrý deň, Prajem. Ešte pred oficiálnym privítaním by som vás hneď na začiatku rada upozornila na pár... Good morning. Prior to the start, I'd like to remind you of some technical issues. You can ask questions from this moment on. Good morning, Mr. Ambassador. Can you hear the interpretation? Okay, thank you. So you can ask questions, Q&A. These are just some administrative issues. So when you ask questions, write your name and who you want to ask your question. We will answer all the questions at the end of this conference. In case you'd like to switch to English language, it's possible. You can choose your language at the bottom. You see a globe with the sign, interpretation sign, and after clicking, you can switch English or Slovak language. And please switch off your Microsoft uh, microphones to avoid any sound, to avoid uh, uh, any disturbance. So this is all when it comes to technical matters. So now allow me to wish you good morning. Officially, I'd like to welcome you at the opening conference of the grant program named Revitalization of Drashkovice Castle in Čaftice. I would like to welcome His Excellency, Mr. Nervik, who is the ambassador of the Kingdom of Norway in Slovakia. Her Excellency, Mrs. Frelichova, who is the ambassador of Slovak Republic in the Kingdom of Norway and Iceland and Mrs. Datskova, who is the head of the Department of EEA and Norway grants. An inseparable part of the project is the project beneficiary, the chairman of the Trenčín region, Mr. Baška, the partner of the project, the high director of the museum in Trenčín. And I also welcome Mrs. Ondrejkova, who is the who is from uh, Čachtice municipality, the mayor, and other costs, Martin Vysurski and others. The Trenčín self-governing region participated in CLT01 call under cultural entrepreneurship, uh, cultural heritage and cooperation with the aim to revi revitalize the cultural monuments and to support their entrepreneurial potential. The goal of the project is social and economic development enhanced by cultural cooperation and entrepreneurship, as well as the management of cultural heritage. The, it's the Ministry of Investments and Regional Development and Informatization of Slovak Republic, which is the program operator, Department of EEA and Norway Grants. As we mentioned, this, the name of the project is Revitalization of Drashkovice Manor House in Čachtice. We received the grant from uh, in the amount of 800,000 euro through EEA grants and from the budget of Slovak Republic. In this virtual way, we shall start this program with revitalization of the castle and we'll hope will breathe new life. It, now I will give the floor to the chairman of Trenčín region, who is also the project beneficiary, Mr. Jaroslav Baška. You have the floor, Mr. Baška. Thank you very much for the floor. In the introduction, I'd like to say that it's not as a person, I'm not the beneficiary as a person of this grant, even though it would be quite interesting to receive 800,000 euro. But I want to thank you and I'm very pleased that at this platform, in this online platform, uh, we can communicate this together with the Mr. Ambassador of the Kingdom of Norway in Slovakia. Mr. Ambassador, welcome and also with Madam Ambassador of Slovak Republic in the Kingdom of Norway. Also welcome, Madam Ambassador. And I also welcome representatives from the Ministry of Investments, uh, Regional Development and Informatization. And I welcome all of you, all uh, stakeholders. And we firmly believe that this project will succeed. And I want to thank everybody who will be responsible for this project. I have noticed for a number of years that Norway and the Kingdom of Norway has contributed with uh, quite significant funds to various projects in Slovak Republic. They include various social projects and so on. And I'm very pleased that the Trenčín region could uh, apply in this project and get the grant amounting to 800,000 euro 
to revitalize the Drashkovich of a manor house in Chartice, which is the, in the property of the Trenčansky region. I'm very pleased that we received these funds for this manor house because uh, it's in Chartice and I welcome uh, the mayor of Chartice, which also has other cultural monuments, the castle of Chartice, and I believe that revitalization of this Drashko, which of Kastier will, uh, this uh, manor house will not only help to increase the number of visitors coming to this part of our region, of the, of the Trenchant region, and that we, I hope that after successful project, after successful completion of the project, we'll be able to welcome more people, not only in Chartice, at Chaktice Castle, but also at Drashkovicho uh, Manor House, that we will be able to welcome more people. Trenčín region co-funds this in the amount of 1.7 million euro from its own budget. We're looking forward to this, and I firmly believe that this project will succeed. In this call, uh, 19 projects were successful in Slovakia, and I'm very pleased that this revitalization project is one of these 19 uh, applicants. There were many more applications, so I'm very pleased. And I want to thank all the persons who worked on the application, on the doc prepared all the documentation, and I'm very pleased that this project was approved at the end of the day. This manor house comes from 17th century. Uh, about 20 or 30 years ago, it was declared to be a national monument. My colleagues will talk about it, either the director of the museum in Trenčín, which uh, is responsible for this castle and other people. I will not talk about this uh, at this point. And I'm very pleased that once this project is implemented, that this castle will serve as a museum, will show the history and will provide services at the level of 21st century where the barrier-free approach, cultural informational center, there will be some background, uh, there will be a cafe, and uh, I believe that various cultural programs will be provided, experiences, uh, there will be new expositions also for handicapped people, and uh, this is, uh, it's very important at the moment, uh, the procurement process started. The deadline for procurement is until 19th of May. If everything goes well, public procurement of progress is uh, well underway. We would like to start works uh, in the summer, possibly in August of this summer. The time schedule is pretty strict. And I firmly believe that together with all the stakeholders, we'll, all, all the parties will be able to successfully uh, complete this revitalization and bring it to life for everybody who likes the history, for everybody who wants to learn something about history. And I'm glad that one of the monuments will be reconstructed with the help of Norway financial mechanism. As we say, the uh, Trenčín region is a region full of castles and Manor houses, we indeed have a lot of a lot of uh, monuments. And uh, Mr. Ambassador, please tell your government that we are very grateful that we can receive funds to to be able to protect and develop our history and bring it to future generations. Thank you very much, Ransiki. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for your introductory speech. Now I would like to uh, give the floor His Excellency, the Te Teodor Nervik, who is the ambassador of the Kingdom of Norway in Slovakia. You have the floor, Mr. Ambassador. Thank you very much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, Dobrydien. Uh, the projects from the Cultural Heritage Program, our, our, our grounds are in progress, but with some delay. 
However, I believe there is still enough time to implement them in full, in good quality and with the desired results. Your project, revitalization of the manor halls of Drashkovich in Prachtice, is one of them, and I am happy for this. The EEA and Norway grants projects have already left their mark on Slovakia. And we are pleased when we see further monuments and further regions to join this family. Traktovice is an important tourist destination and it is very good that the manor house will be restored, preserved for present and future generations. It is also important that the quality of services provided for visitors and tourists, including the disabled, will be improved. The creation of a new cultural and creative center in the restored manor house will bring incentives for cultural and social life of the local community, as well as the region. These changes will also open new opportunities for the local economy so there is a lot of added value to this project. I wish you a lot of success with your project and look forward to see your result in person when the circumstances allow it. And, hope, and I hope that this will be sooner rather than later. So thank you and good luck to everybody with the project. Thank you very much, Mr. Nervik. Thank you very much, Mr. Ambassador. And now I will give the floor to Denisa Frelichova, who is the Ambassador of Slovak Republic in the Kingdom of Norway. Good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning to all of you. Best regards. And uh, I would like to thank the Trenčín region for this invitation. This is a region I come from. I was born in Bojnice and Čachtice. It's one of the places where we, we used to like very much. So it, this is indeed a great honor and I'm delighted. And in this way, I'd like to give my regards to you. Čachtice play a significant role in our history. And it's not only about Bathory, Countess Bathory. I remember very well when we learned about history. In 1847, there, there was our first national community of Slovaks uh, was formed here with the Stur of the Stur period, and they agreed on on uh, legalizing the Slovak language and Slovak orthography. My mother was a teacher of literature, so this these were places we visited very often. But in general, historic Monuments are an inseparable part of our cultural and national identity. This is our, their, our richness and richness of our society and uh, with the direct link to our ancestors. And uh, they are not only a culture, cultural issues, but they bring uh, potential of economic development of the region. And Slovakia has a huge richness in uh, on its territory and in, it requires a lot of work but also significant funds to preserve this heritage and therefore i would like to thank to the uh, operators of drashkovichov castle and every man or manor house and everybody who participates and i'd like to express my gratitude to our friends in norway iceland and Liechtenstein, and to eea financial mechanism which helps to build understanding to strengthen our friendships and uh, connections in way of supporting cultural heritage. So I would like to wish you a successful conference and I would like to wish a, a good and successful project. Thank you very much. Mrs. Frelichova, thank you very much for your speech. Now, the program operator, Ministry of Investments, Regional Develop 
development and uh, informatization, I'd like to give the floor to the head of EEA grants, a Norway grant, Mrs. Jana Datskova. Thank you very much. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much to Trenchin, Trenchin region for the invitation to this opening conference of the project revitalization of Drashkovicho Manor House in Chartice as the representatives of the cultural program of Ministry of uh, Informatization and Regional Development, as it was mentioned, which is uh, supported from EEA and Slovak state budget. First of all, I I'm a representative. I would like to congratulate to the Trenchin region and to the museum for obtaining, being successful in this call. This support was mainly possible thanks to the consent of donors with the using of reserve and transfer of other funds from EEA uh, for cultural renewal of cultural heritage. It is, it is confirmed that EEA and Norway grants play an important role in saving our cultural heritage. They will contribute with 16 million to improve the 19, 19 monuments in Slovakia with the reconstruction purpose. Drashkovicho Castle in Chastice is one of them. And I would like to say that it was not easy to win this grant since in this call, there were 66 applicants. Drashkovicho Manor House in Chastice is one of the successful project because on the selection committee and assessors decided that the project was well developed, well prepared, focusing on on uh, establishing an information uh, center in the castle, which requires uh, reconstructions. I'd like to quote the statement of one of the mem members of selection panel: "Renewal of castle and the museum could be." attractive for visitors of Chartice Castle ruins, as well as for people living in the near region. The picture of bloody Elizabeth Bathory can be attractive, can add some attractiveness to this place. So there are things to be looking forward to. This castle should provide cultural education events, and it should be a place for relaxation and uh, enjoyment nice time so on behalf of program operator i wish you a successful implementation to achieve this goal thank you very much poprosím o príhovor aj pána riaditeľa trenčianskeho múzea v trenčíne a partnera projektu pána petra martiniska nech sa páči so now we'll have uh, peter uh, martiniska from the trenčín museum in trenčín thank you very much your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. In 2014, when I joined the Trenčín Museum and when I saw the Manor House of Trashkovich for the first time, I thought that would be really a challenge and it would be really a challenge to repair the Manor House so that it can serve the public and its visitors. In cooperation with uh, the municipality of Čaktice, were able to uh, connect this manor house to the sewage system in 2015. It was unimaginable. And gradually, with uh, uh, colleagues from the Trenchin Museum and South Governing Region, we did the architectural and historic research and, uh, and repaired the roof to prevent uh, rain from entering. And in part water and air conditioning is not working, electricity is missing. So it's uh, a recall of the wild 1990s when the uh, building was devastated. And you, you can see uh, traces of shooting that happened in the 1990s. So the manor house is in a situation when uh, it was uh, up to the decision whether to sell it to a private investor or whether to take care of it so that it can serve as a place of culture. And I'm very happy that um, the chairman of the self-governing region agreed that we should repair the manor house and enhance the culture in Chachtice. 
and it would really um, become a jewel of Chachtitsa. So the Chachtitsa is not only the Chachtitsa castle, but uh, visitors uh, should also stay directly in the municipality and also spend their money on buying souvenirs, sitting in the restaurants, and also uh, get education about culture. So I would really like to thank Mr. Bashka, the chairman of the Trenchin Self-Governing Region, uh, Madam Vlamachko, Madam Vankova, and also uh, Mr. Mravets, the architect, who helped us with this project. And I would like to wish you all uh, a lot of success so that we can cope with the public procurement challenges in this project and uh, within 24 months, uh, we should be opening this manor house to the public. Thank you very much for your help. Thanks to the donor for the funding and also thanks to the self-governing region providing co-financing. Thank you. Mr. Martinisko, thank you very much. And now I would like to ask uh, the mayor of the municipality of Chachtice, Madam Erika Andrejkova, to uh, hold her speech. Good morning. Thank you. Your Excellency, uh, the Ambassador of the Kingdom of Norway to Slovakia, Your Excellency, Ambassador of the Slovak Republic to Norway, ladies and gentlemen, dear guests, it's a great honor for me to take part in this opening conference of uh, the project revitalization of the Drashkovich Manor House in Chachtice, supported from uh, the EEA grants and uh, the, the Norway funds and the state budget of the Slovak Republic. As the representative of the municipality of Chachtice, I was happy to welcome the piece of news that one of the cultural monuments that we have in our municipality will see its uh, thorough uh, reconstruction. And this project should should enhance the attractiveness of the municipality for uh, the citizens and visitors. And therefore, the municipality supported this project. The Renaissance manor house of Drashkovich from the 17th century uh, underwent several, uh, several changes. It was built in the 17th century by um, Mikolaj Drashkovich and for uh, the Forgach family uh, redeveloped it to a representative uh, seat, and they have been owning it for 140 years. Uh, under the previous regime, there was a major reconstruction of this building and a museum was established there. At the end of last century, there was a museum and a winery and a restaurant in the manor house. And there was a big room in... There is some interruption. Can I continue? So where there was a big room where dances were held every week. Or it was also used as a hall for wedding ceremonies and wedding, uh, wedding parties. And uh, the garden was also used for garden parties. And Chachtice uh, is well known uh, thanks to the Countess, bloody Countess uh, Alžbeta Bathory. However, there is more to Chachtice history, uh, and uh, this history was rich in events and the exposition of the Trenčín Museum that will be located in the Drashkovich Manor House will um, focus on this topic. I'm very happy that after revitalization and reconstruction, the building of the Manor House will not only serve as a museum cafe, a cultural and creative center, but it also allow the provision of services to tourists. Although Chachtice is a major tourist spot, what we lack uh, is a tourist information center that would provide consultancy and information to visitors about all the options offered by our municipality. We know that there are many opportunities in our municipality. And I trust that thanks to the implementation of this project, the Manor House of Drashkovich will become a living place that will be visited by uh, history enthusiasts, but also tourists that just stop by to spend uh, their moments in a reconstructed historical monument. In conclusion of my speech, I would like to wish this project a successful launch and uh, uh, 
I wish you good luck with selecting the contractor and a lot of energy in in uh, resolving various challenges. I wish a successful project completion, and I look forward together with you to the outcome. To, in the very conclusion, I would like to thank the Trenchin self-governing region for uh, the attention and energy that uh, they've been paying to Chaktice, and uh, they are thus helping even more to make Chaktice more visible in the historical and tourist map in, in Slovakia. Thank you uh, very much, your mayor. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and I would like to thank for all the speeches that we heard. And Chakchitsa is not about the story of life of the Countess Battery. Uh, this, uh, the proof of this is the revitalization of the Manor House of Drashkovich, and we'll have a presentation uh, on this um, by Tomasz Michalik now. Thank you very much for the floor. Can you hear me? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for the floor. Apologies for some technical issues in the beginning. My name is Tomasz Michalik, and I'm the deputy director who just held his talk a moment ago, how he joined our museum in 2014. And he, and I believe this project in Chaktice will be a part of his professional success story. The Trenčín Museum is one of the uh, one of the three museums within our region, and our focus is uh, the Vák Valley region, Trenčín, Ilavanové Mesto, Nadvahom towns and we're the only partner of this project because we're the administrator of this manor house we have several major monuments national national cultural monuments and most of our uh, monuments are in the city of Trenčín there is the Trenčín castle and other historical monuments then uh, Betsko, there is the Ambrovets mansion, and uh, the manor house of Drashkovich in Chaktice is uh, falls within our administration, and there is uh, the museum in Nové Mesto nad Váhom. and due to various anniversaries, we've been intensively focusing on the uh, town of Uhrovets where there is the birth house of uh, the of Ludovic Stur, a major Slovakian personality. The um, motto of my presentation is uh, the attempt, attempt in the change in the paradigm, because when people hear the word Chachtice, most will recall the bloody Countess Bathory, or people with different preferences of cultural tourism will certainly recall the Chachtice castle and the person of this bloody countess uh, is presented uh, in a quite shallow manner uh, with just the presentation of some selected aspects of her personality and uh, she found her reflection in pop culture in uh, one of the most uh, magnificent movies uh, directed by a Slovak director in 2020. So mostly Chachtice is perceived through the prism of this bloody countess or the Chachtice castle. And I would be very happy if uh, in the course of several years, we would be able to expand uh, this perspective. Maybe with uh, the coming of a new generation, that is looking for uh, more sophisticated projects of cultural tourism. Of course, we do not want to negate the person of uh, Alžbeta Bathory, the bloody countess, because uh, she's connected with our uh, with our manor house in terms of presentation, not in terms of history. And we believe that uh, the uh, reconstructed manor house of uh, Drashkovich will be an addition to the existing cultural monuments in Chaktice, which is a uh, Chaktice castle and battery. So we speak about symbiosis, not competition. 
when uh, we talk about Chachtitsa, uh, these uh, elements are a cultural historical potential. And so far, the manor house is a sleeping princess. And uh, my priest uh, talked about the jewel uh, of Chachtitsa in terms of history or the importance of the manor house for the history of Slovaks. And in the course of years, we'll try to put the jewels together to uh, create a jewel necklace. And there is an interesting story related to the history of Chaktice. It's not an everyday story and it went beyond uh, the borders of Slovakia. If you Google bloody countess, uh, you will receive uh, as a search the bloody countess of Čaktice. And she uh, also got to the Guinness Book of Records as the bloodiest person in the world. So. So if you take all these ingredients, you can create a very fine uh, meal in Čaktice. And how do you want to achieve this? We want to implement two types of activities. So the first type is more static. That's the in situ presentation of the actual building of the manor house, which is a major cultural monument. It's on the list of prioritized cultural monuments. So the in situ presentation and in, in fondo presentation, that means the presentation of our collection, most of them will relate to Čachtice or the surroundings. We want to achieve this first point through monument uh, restoration and the installation of new expositions. And the second element, in terms of investments, it's not so demanding, but in terms of impact on uh, the presentation of the past of the region that was uh, always uh, adventurous, we want to achieve it through various dynamic activities that I will talk about. We had several acknowledgements uh, of the Trenchin self-governing region and I also join these acknowledgements because they uh, are behind the successful application. The Trenchin self-governing region is in charge of the construction part. We talk about monument restoration and reconstruction. And the Trenchin Museum, who are the administrators of this building, will be in charge of the expert part that is uh, the expositions and the content. And this uh, expert part will be covered by our professional employees. We have several young and uh, smart uh, historians, et ethnographists who will be able to face this challenge. And our colleagues work in uh, the Podjavarinske Museum in Nové Mesto nad Váhom and we'll be happy to provide support to them from our headquarters in Trenčín. And we also pay external experts from our funds. We have a project board, a team that helps us to uh, cover some topics uh, that these colleagues are expert in. One of those experts is the historian Peter Brinza who is the director of the state archives in Trenčín. And the second expert is Dr. Josef Karlik, a historian who is, uh, the, uh, who is most knowledgeable in the local history of Čachtice and the surrounding region south of Trenčín. Dr. Brinza also specializes in the 17th century and Dr. Karlik Uh, focuses on the Jewish community in the, the sad history of this minority in the, at the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century. 
as for some uh, starting points and assumptions, of course, uh, data governs public policies. So we uh, kept asking our visitors what uh, they were missing in Czechtice. And we merged this with the mission of our museum, what our task was. We're able to identify several um, overlapping points. That's the interest in history, which might be surprising, is that our visitors prefer, prefer a free approach. They are mostly not happy when they are limited by a guide. If they want to ask something, they can ask at, um, at the reception, but I can un understand this because when I visit cultural monuments, I also prefer to move around freely. Then one of the attributes is uh, the interconnection uh, with the local environment. Because we, we have many uh, exhibitions that uh, are not uh, focused on the local region, but we really want to be local in our expositions because Czechtice was a very important town in the past. As for the visitor feedback, uh, they uh, demand at least basic services, really some basic refreshments, coffee, etc. This is maybe a challenge for the future for this municipality maybe the paradigm could be changed. So not only services in terms of history, but at least basic uh, supporting services uh, matching the 21st century. We also heard feedback from our visitors concerning some uh, refreshment of the static expositions for different target groups, like ch families with children, etc. So different target groups have different requirements. And because we're in the 21st century, these target groups should uh, or the program could be adapted to them. It can be short term or ad hoc events. Because when there is just one single static exhibition and uh, nothing extra, then it is legitimate to ask uh, to uh, that, uh, or or it might be considered a black hole. Okay, yes. Mm -hmm. We also decided to focus on a professional approach. So we established a micro team. We don't want to stay at the, remain at the surface, but we want to go deeper, deeper into the history uh, concerning the ex expertise. So to sum it up, in one sentence or a slogan or a motive, we want to focus on the presentation of the past in a modern, attractive way. We believe that this, this way we opted for will lead to increase of number of visitors and it will also generate profit because what we can if uh, together with Mr. Director, the renewal of the monuments shouldn't serve a purpose. It should be just uh, the first kickoff of a new attribute, which should help to develop the sites, but to, to renew some monuments which are not visited by anybody, this is not a good investment. So we're coming to an economically rational approach to renewal of sites uh, supported from public grant resources. And I want to stress that we, we hope that the whole philosophy of this project is in line with this uh, call, CLT01 from 2019 in these uh, EEA grants. And uh, each slide should be concluded by a light motive. Uh, we believe that cultural Heritage should not be just a passive recipient of support from financial resor of resources, but it should be adjusted to generate some income, which must be, of course, reasonable. We don't want to have a new Disneyland or something, 
we don't want to abuse the, the monuments, but the, to have some economic advantages, if, if there's economic benefit of, or profit zero, that is not probably the good, good way. So in a trench in museum, we are happy about this setting and we believe that the parameters were set very well. Up to the static, uh, colleagues will talk about static elements of this project. Excuse me, this presentation was originally done. Uh, Mrs. Varova uh, was supposed to speak about, about the result of surveys. So Mr. Janura will talk and then Mr. Mravec will talk about the reconstruction itself. And uh, our colleague historian, Martin Pusowski. Uh, and uh, now I will only say a few words about dynamic element. When it comes to these dynamic activities, we talk about uh, presentations, lectures on historic issues. As it was said, we will focus on the region of Čartice and we'll talk about minorities. The area Petsko, Nové Mesto nad Váhom, Čartice. This region in the past was a region with a large number of Jewish, high number of Jews, so the Jewish community was very strong in some regions it was one third of the population but due to some tragic events this was the past when it comes to Čartice we would like to focus on Roma Roma question of Roma issues mainly concerning their handicrafts smithereens and so on and we talk about artistic talents artistic talent of Roma kids when it comes to discussions, we will focus on uh, combating extremism. The lectures and discussions will be interconnected. We will not avoid the first half of 40s in this region, which may not be always, these topics may not be always present, but we believe that this uh, cut must be done quite strictly so that we can look into the eyes of our children. This project will also include the program of museums, programs in museums, different workshops. They will be different. There will be a presentation from external specialists, ceramics, if possible. We can do various manual things. So there should be a topics from the field of living history and as well as cultural and creative center, which will be open and uh, different target groups or communities will be able to come. We mainly expect to focus on kids. As Madam Mayor said, uh, together with Čartice, there will be an information center where we expect the symbiosis of our interests with the interests of Čartice. Naturally, we don't want to focus only on the manor house, but we want to focus on a wide scale of cultural offer offered by Čartice municipality. The project should also include a cafe which will be done through a lease to external entity where we want to focus on quality and local approach. So I believe that the assignment from our side will include the offer of local products. We're not talking not only about Čartice, but also about a region, more detailed re uh, region. So why we believe that this project uh, was successful or conditions of success? Well, first of all, uh, it's based on the number of pillars, the good preparation. I believe there was a high degree of preparation. Uh, the surveys, monument surveys were done. Some other are expected. A colleague from the regional monument board will talk about it. Also, good preparation of project documentation. People who understand it, they uh, provided various comments 
we don't expect to have some principal uh, objections of project preparation, a topic which was discussed by Mr. Chairman of Trenjin region, which was reflected in my view into a positive result for this project was the willingness to, of co-funding to a large degree. And we were grateful to Trenčín self-governing region for this, which did a lot of extra work. And we are very grateful for this. Such a scope of uh, support is indeed unseen or is uh, indeed unique in comparison with other projects. The third pillar are ambitions of the partner. Trenčín Museum in the past years invested into each of its projects, indeed into each of the projects. And I dare to say that uh, with regard to the circumstances of a regional museums, these are enormous money, six figures, sums uh, in a situation where Facebook and other so social networks are only flooded with the uh, cries or criticism, but we indeed rather work hard and try to overcome barriers. And the result is enormous progress in a number of areas. And I believe that we have a very positive and uh, citizens of uh, places where we have our objects. Our ambition was also the possibility to participate in the comprehensive product of tourism in the region of Považie. Our Zdeniansky wrote in the past that Považie region is the pearl of upper Hungarian monarchy. So there's so many castles, so many historic sites and monuments, and we want to co contribute at least partially to renew this, this past fame. We also would like to present the past in this region in an innovative way. And I believe that when we meet in two years at the final conference, we will be able to present uh, convincing results of this, of these actions. And it's the way of uh, implementation of the projects in cooperation with commercial entities and with other stakeholders, I believe, will be able to use the historic, cultural and historic potential. So see you in Čachtice. I don't forget that our we have a number of branches of Trenčín Museum and others will be happy to meet you anywhere because Považie is a beautiful region. If should you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Thank you very much. And we were inviting you to come over to Považie. Thank you very much. In case that you don't want to write the mail and wait for the answer, I'd like to remind you that Mr. Michalik also, you can, at this moment, you can write him a question. At the bottom, you see Q&A. You don't need to wait until the very end, even though at the end we'll answer the questions. But in case that something's come to your mind, comes to your mind, you can do that. But at the same time, I'd like to ask you that you write that it's directly for Mr. Michalik. Teraškovičo Manor House in the light of archive and architectonic research will be presented by Tomáš Javora. You have the floor. Tomáš Janora. So I'll share my screen, show you the presentation. Could I ask for technical support? Okay. Your Excellencies, dear guests, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you a few words about the research. Mrs. Varova apologized. She had some other obligations. She's actually outside of her home. So she is doing some other research. 
historic research. When it comes to Drashkovich Manor House in Čehachtice, in the introduction, I need to tell you that the big impact on the origin of the, the Manor House, uh, they were a part of the estate of the castle estate and uh, this estate from 16th century or even in the 15th century castles were were built in Čachtice itself so in core in the period until the end of 17th century on the territory of Čachtice there were four four castles and manor houses were built and this was due to the fact that this uh, castle estate was divided among a number of owners and each of them built their own house. When it comes to Drashkovicho, Drashkovicho castle, it was the last one in Čachtice. It was built by a Cro originally Croatian nobleman, the Count Mikolaj Drashkovic, who was the, in the faction of the regional judge, the highest judge for the whole Hungarian monarchy. So he had the right to sentence all noblemen, noblemen in the country. And he was also the main, he was responsible for the territory, part of territory. So Madam Mayor said that the, the Castle was built in 1660. I don't know what is the research, but there, the years in literature is, are not not always precise. So it was built in 1667. It's according according to historic data. Drashkovic came from Croatia, but uh, he got this after he got married with uh, the, the countess. Katarina Drugetova, she was a co-owner co at this uh, castle estate Čachtica. The family of his wife had their own seat or castle, which doesn't exist anymore. But what's important is that this family was one of the most affluent families in the Hungarian monarchy. And they mainly had in Zemplin region, it's on the eastern Slovakia and western part of the Carpathian region, Humene and Užhorod. So they did not live actually in Čachtice, and Drashkovic did not have any, and did not have a lot of property. So this family decided that the Čachtice and the territory at Čachtice. Uh, where he let his castle built, whereby this is the last one. And uh, well, in the vicinity of this castle, there were three other residences. When it comes to historic development, it's important to say that on this scheme, you can see that what is blue, dark blue, the, the blue color, that's the result of the construction activity of Mikulaš Drashkovic. So this is an essential part of the today's object. What Mrs. Zvarova did, if we should assess this, so he had the main, the main part, the southern wing with the two floors, including the basement. That's what he had built. And uh, the center of the disposition is opening through the mass of the castle. And on the sides, you have stairs, stairs going up. When it comes to the ground floor, that served as a economic uh, premises or the local workers were living there or local employees when it comes to individual floors. I don't read the analysis, but I just know there was a big hole in the center and on both sides, there were representation premises or representation rooms. When it comes to the whole castle, 
Uh, it does not represent an exceptional work. This was an average contemporaneous standard. Rashkovich probably did not plan to live in Chachtice, actually. When it comes to further development after the death of Mikolaj Rashkovich, it's interesting that with regard to the fact that in Hungarian monarchy, inheritance was according to the male line, male family line, but it could also occasionally be according to the female. And this happened in this case, the Countess Barbara Drashkovicheva inherited this castle. And it was due to a simple fact, Miklas Drashkovich got the, this castle thanks to his wife. And the system which was applied was that it were the, the female members of the family and not the male, not the men. The problem was that Barbara Drashkovicheva herself did not have any kids. So after her death, the, this her property was uh, transferred to the daughter, daughters of her cousin, Zygmunt Druget, and he's the brother of the wife of Mikula Drashkovich. So these two sisters are actually the last members of Druget family since their father did not have any um, boys. It's Juniara. Uh, uh, Clara, Juliana and Clara Druge. These si sisters were still minor, so they were still children. So their mother, Countess Terezia Krivecivicová, she administered this, this estate, originally of Croatian origin, and Terezia, similarly as most uh, people in Druge family, she lived in Humene or in Užhorod. So she was not actually interested in this castle, and when in uh, 1710 an exchange agreement was signed, which meant that uh, the Earl Pavel Forgac, who was interested in this, since the Forgac family had a property, especially in a Nitria region, including the Chachtice. So they agreed on a simple thing. Pavel Forgac uh, senior would give to Teresa all his shares, all the property he, which he inherited after his mother to Kristina Drugetova, who was the sister of the wife of Mikulaš Drashkovic. So he left her the property at the Zemplin region and Terezia gave up in favor of Pavel uh, Forgač to the whole share of Drashkovic. Uh, na panstve, a tým vlastne došlo teda uh, k tomu, že v roku 1710 sa dom... So what happened was that in 1710, Pavel senior Forgač becomes the owner and it, uh, the name still remained the Drashkovic man house, although the owner was changed. As for the reconstruction during the era of Pavel Senior Forgaj, you can see here in light blue, that's his um, contribution, that's the second in sequence. And as for this reconstruction, he expanded it by uh, the new wing, this blue, uh, light blue of two floors. And according to the documentation from the 1950s, there was a chapel there, but today uh, we are unable to locate it due to various reconstructions in the 1950s and later. As for the facades of this new wing, they were similar to the main uh, southern wing. Uh, there are wooden chambranes. As for the preconditions, there is an issue with uh, the uh, Virgin Mary of, nine, of 1715, and this replaced the older uh, sun uh, clock. Uh, that's a question of our Trenchin Museum. It's obvious from the maps of the 19th century that there was also a uh, southwest wing Today, this wing is non-existent, so it has to be underground. And archaeological research could confirm whether 
this wing was also built in the era of Pavel Forgaj or whether it's a later building or earlier. As for the property after Pavel Sr. Forgaj, he's an interesting personality because after the death of his wife, Emerencia Reva, about the Countess, he decided to join the clergy and he became a bishop and uh, preposed. And these are uh, just honorary functions. And it's a reminiscence of the medieval bishopships and during the presence of the Osman Empire. And Pavel decided on the 28th of April, 1721, that after his death, the manor house and uh, the property should be inherited by his three sons, Pavel, Ladislaw, and Josef Forgac. And before this uh, splitting, he recorded the description of the manor house of the 21st March. And this description is an invaluable source because we can reconstruct the purposes of the various rooms. It's also a question for the Trenchin Museum whether there will be uh, information for visitors. For example, this room had such purpose like bakery or uh, the Castellan's room. It's interesting for the tourists when they are told what was the original purpose of the rooms, because this is missing many times in the Slovakian castles that you see this museum presentation, but you don't know what the rooms were originally intended for. As for the internal furnishing, there is the upper and lower manor house and the description suggests that the upper manor house is uh, the current building and the lower is non-existent now. The, on the right side of the lower uh, lower uh, entry, uh, there was the parlor and the castellan and there were other rooms. Uh, there was the room of the Jew, that probably means uh, the uh, tenant or somebody who uh, ran uh, the pub because it was mostly Jews at that time that ran such businesses. And then uh, the second gate, there were two balconies above and on the left and right of the second gate, there were uh, stables and the stable on the right was followed by a big carriage room on the left from the second on the left there was a stable then a kitchen and a well and then another three bigger rooms and the middle room served as a bakery this is the description of the currently non-existent wing Then the stock takers uh, came from the lower to the upper uh, manor house. And in the middle of this uh, building, there was the carriageway and two staircases to the first floor. And on the ground floor, on the left and right, there were rooms. One of those rooms was uh, the was the storage room, and uh, then uh, the chaplain's room. And in the middle, there was this representative hall where social life took place. And on the right of this representative hall. 
there were three rooms with various baldachines and it's a question whether it's paintings or textile in the last there were two rooms the cabinet with an italian chimney that has been preserved the italian chimney referred to a to an oven with uh, an artistic design on the left of uh, the representative hall there were three rooms with uh, paintings probably some gallery and then the chapel where uh, masses were held as for the uh, other history of the manor house out of those three sons of Pavel Senior Forgaj, the only owner was Ladislav Forgaj because the others lived elsewhere. And this is due to the fact that Vladislav was a council in the uh, royal representative uh, board in Bratislava. And it was a kind of government because it was executive power of the Habsburgs in Vienna that ran the entire country in terms of administration and uh, the working of the state institutions. Ladislav Forgac is interesting because he already, he had four wives with 15 children, but only five lived uh, until adulthood and uh, the succession was not only in Chachtice and the only heir of the manor house in Chachtice was his youngest son uh, from the fourth marriage, Miklas Forgac. Miklas Forgac lived in this manor house with Countess Josefa Rudnianska, his wife, and she came from a family that was uh, very close to the elite of the monarchy at that time and she was born in Natsepin, a baroque uh, manor house, uh, a part of Budapest. And Mikolaj Forgac uh, got very good contacts because uh, her family uh, was among the elite of the then uh, society. They didn't have any children. And after the death of his wife, Mikolaj never uh, remarried and this can be due to the fact that, uh, that they really loved each other because at that time it was normal that after the death of uh, the wife the husband would remarry because he needed uh, to uh, maintain his uh, family and the Forgac family was very extensive he decided Forgac that all his property would go to his daughter-in-law, Countess Maria Forgačeva, but Maria with uh, Zygmunt Forgač, her husband, they lived in uh, the manor house in, in Slanets in summer and in a palais in Košice. So they had absolutely no interest to move to Čakčice because uh, there was nothing uh, they would have in common with it. And uh, therefore she, sold the manor house in 1852 uh, to the Chinkis. These are the last owners at the end of the 19th century. This only comes from uh, the regional monography. And the last uh, documented owners in written documents are Ch the Chinkis uh, family. I was unable to uh, find anything more detailed except uh, for what you see in my presentation. In the archives uh, of Chachtice, there should be documents on the second half of the 19th century. And uh, there uh, further owners could be found because I have no access to these archives because I am not the owner or a legal successor of the owners. In Budapest, there is the Forgage archive. A research can be done there. So this information can be supplemented. Thank you. 
ďakujem veľmi pekne a samozrejme aj... Thank you very much. And with Mr. Janura, if you have any questions, you can ask them in this moment in the Q&A section in the bottom part of uh, this screen. And we can move next. On behalf of the Regional Monument Board in Trenčín, we'll hear a talk about the adaptation of the manor house uh, in uh, the 20th century uh, by Lucia Pastierova. The floor is yours. Hello, thanks for the floor. I would like to present the actual situation. I'll describe the challenges that we had to face uh, that was the existing layout after the uh, dissolution of the cafe and winery, static damage, uh, humidity, unsuitable fillings of the openings, unsuitable materials, technical uh, fittings of the building beyond the useful life. These were the key challenges. So unsuitable layout is that in the 1960s, there was a big winery with a big restaurant. The buildings are really devastated. Here's the basement and the ground floor. This, this was the restaurant and the winery, most devastated. And in the first floor, there is the museum, and these premises are in quite good condition. Then the fillings of openings, upper left, is a typical 19th century window. And below these are portals of the 1970s. Uh, like uh, it's iron and glass unsuitable for the building and some doors are in the state as you can see on the right unsuitable materials and in the passageway there is concrete floor in the restaurant premises there is a spish travertine it's not an original material unsuitable for this building and of course, flooring of that period, uh, you can see it on the right. Then another problem are static damages, cracks, and the static problem is that uh, it's built into a slope and the right a side is on an embankment and uh, the soil uh, can absorb a lot of water and release it quickly. This right wing is sitting down. It's been uh, addressed in the 1950s where a part had to be torn down and rebuilt. So we mapped this in detail with probes we evaluated the loading capacity. And another challenge are the vaults that are uh, being torn apart. And the situation is that we needed to tear down some vaults. Then a rising humidity is one of the biggest challenges. You can see in the pictures, there were attempts at uh, improving this by cement plasters, but they will push the humidity even higher. Cement is white, and this is the reason humidity, and the outcome is that it even worsened the situation. So the bottom and upper parts are devastated. The same situation with the front facade, a cement plaster, pushing the humidity up. You can see it on the bottom left as well, where this humidity in the ceiling is uh, very uh, large because there's no ventilation. Technical state, 
what's worst from our viewpoint is unfunctioning sewage system. It's stuck also with the drainage of rainwater. Uh, the water is not being drained away. You can see it in the flooring and in the complicated static situation. It's really dramatic. This is a dramatic problem, this um, dysfunctional sewage system. And on the right side, you can see the electro installation proposed status. So what did we deal with? We proposed the new disposition, the new solution, sanation of static defects, the humidity, to each replacement of windows, replacement of doors uh, in agreed scopes. Some of the doors were in a situation that uh, there could be reused again. Another sanation of uh, stone portals in interior and exteriors, renewal of facades, including the copies of plastics of new and the, as well as installation of new sun clock exchange of floors in all rooms except for the central room on the floor renewal of the the layers uh, new solutions to the pavements around the object and the Sanation of the fencing as well as the garden would be done in the second phase. And we cover the close vicinity of the project, not some uh, Renaissance uh, garden. A large scope of works is the exchange of technical infrastructure. That means there will be nothing in sight, everything will be replaced around the object all lines will be replaced plus new gas connection new electric connection upon request and since it's connected with the uh, in sewage then assanations removal of the old floors at the ground floor, first floor, and all the walls, uh, including portals uh, and uh, floors, removal of wooden stairs, which is not functional, then removal of uh, stairs in the northwest wing, there were some uh, decrepit old doors which need uh, stairs which need to be completely rebuilt removal of existing fixed areas around the object as well as removal of existing technical infrastructure so what we propose to do in the basement the, you can see the basement now ceilings So we should we should re renew the air air conditioning and uh, we need to make sure that uh, the expression is called. Then there should be an exposition of winemaking and viticulture, including the tasting of wines with the exterior so there should be some wine tasting if there's a tour made so they should stop and we we put in we found these rooms uh, in the basement for wines and uh, with this corridor we, we could uh, have some chairs and tables and people could taste wines then exposition of battery is uh, on the left uh, 
obnovenie prírodzeného preletrania podlahy z pieskovcových platní. Samozrejme, podlahy... Of from, uh, floors, uh, very good insulation, heat insulation uh, to ensure a good technical standard. Then a renewal of connection to the underground corridors, if possible, from the archive document, it seems uh, that uh, it was in the underground. So, and we expect that if we show the new, we should be able to come to this door or it should be made accessible and uh, based on, on agreement we find the solution which will make it more attractive in the basement we would open the arcades which were closed in the 70s by this filling the glass filling a proposal of a small cafe which could be open these green areas so in the north court there should could be catering for some small for some weddings possibly to sit in the arcade in the south social facility is proposed in a way that it can serve for the museum on the left, as well as for the cafe. So when the museum is closed, the cafe can function in case of a wedding or some organization without a connection to the museum, but from the toilet can function via entry from the cafe. So as the nobleman came as through the entry, so now there will be this entry and we will see this down here. We are even considering that we should have some special floor. There was a discussion, but then a different solution was found. And other premises, you can see with beige, beige color to adjusted for the needs of museums. The floors could be completely new which could be insulated. And the proposal of the new boiler room in the northern northern uh, corner. On the floor, in functional toilets were liquidated, which actually destroyed the impression from nice premises. So we got it to a, a historic, original, historic form. And the wooden stair would be liquidated. That should be supplemented. A small deposit. This would be in the renewed wing northwest replacement of existing floors uh, for renaissance wooden floors localization of original artifacts of the object into the central hall so the statue of virgin mary will have a copy of it of the original would be put in this central room as well as the relief as a precious artifact which is not in a very dig would be put in the central room moreover to improve the insulation uh, 
there will be the insulation of the floor. So this is the proposed solution. We have visualizations, what it should look like after the reconstruction. The idea is that the it will be painted, but it will remain in natural form and the remaining facade would be clean and wooden elements. But the combination of nature. So what shall we do in terms of static uh, defects? Uh, reconstruction of the foundations in the eastern part through the pressure injections. Uh, a special matter will be injected into it, which will, will make the foundation firm. So to avoid any this future disruption. So with this method, we would like to stabilize the foundation for the, the eastern part. Increasing the horizontal part of eastern part of southern wing, these red drawings done in the, everything is invisible, obviously. It will increase the eastern wing with which we have most static problems. Floors, uh, the corridors on the floors cause problems with the stiffness, but then we found out that this it's necessary to stabilize them, stabilize the vault, and we need to make some other adjustments static adjustment for the attic, then all cracks, Re reparation of all static cracks, as well as to exchange of uh, sewages with the verification of their, to, to, to prevent leakages. It's important to, for the control of the leakages because the sewage is very important. The sewage uh, system. Uh, we need to avoid humidity. Humidity. We need to find a solution to prevent the humidity of walls. It's impossible to dig under it. The southern wing is not. Well, it's impossible to come to get to these walls. So if we want to find a solution with some super modern way, we would put injection, which is very expensive. And it's not appropriate for this. So we decided the to find a way which prevents the natural breathing of the walls. That means to renew ventilation, ventilation, which is very important, and we'll keep it in the, uh, to have a character of uh, stone ceilings. We would do the, So the plus of the walls would be removed at least 50 centimeters above all the humidity level. And then it would be an infusion hydroisolation shield along all those red lines. So all walls would be insulated through the pumped shield. The outer walls uh, would uh, get a uh, drying plaster work of three centimeters thickness. 
and uh, the facade coating uh, would be by silicate uh, dye to remove humidity from the walls. On the north northwest side, there would be a drainage trench So you would need to insulate the walls and uh, we'll put a ditch to remove water. And in the interior, uh, the plasterwork would be removed 50 centimeters above uh, the uh, humidity level. So that would be all from our perspective. Thank you. Mr. Mravet, thank you very much for your presentation. The next presenter is Mr. Martin Vinsurski, who will uh, comment on uh, the intention and content of the new expositions in the manor house of Drashkovich. The floor is yours. Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I will try to briefly summarize the intention and content, our ideas of the design of the new expositions in the manhouse of Trashkovich that would be installed there. You probably know from the pre-speakers that there was an ex exposition in uh, the manor house of Drashkovich in recent past, since it's been closed, it's inaccessible, being liquidated and removed. But this previous exposition was smaller than what we intend. And it's good to know that the manor house was used as a museum in the past as well. This is just for illustration that the expositions concerned the history of Chachtice, the Tatrin club of the mid 19th century or Alshmeta Batory, the bloody countess. As for the uh, thematic focus, we do not want to deviate from this. Our expositions should reflect the history of the region. As uh, the colleague Tomas Michalik mentioned, we do not want to deviate we want to have the expositions uh, relating to the local region where the main house is located. As for the idea uh, concept, uh, you could get a picture from Dr. Michalik's presentation. It's important to say that as an expert institution, we put emphasis on the expertness. And there is one question there of Mr. Jan Reichen, uh answer it on Alzheimer's battery, but I'll answer in general. We plan to have the expositions as expert ones in line with expert literature and research. We would like to avoid too much popularization as such. Of course, popularization is related to expositions, but it should be to a certain reasonable degree as for Alzheimer's battery. As for popularization, uh, modern rally, modern implementation is associated with it. Pro, uh, expert uh, nature is important, but people will not come uh, to the museum to buy uh, expert research literature, but laymen will come who want to see something nice, so they want to learn something, and the modern implementation will help in this. In line with modern trends, we'll use interactive elements, will certainly uh, cooperate with uh, partners so that are expert in uh, such work. And the outcome should be the visitor's experience and the visitors should leave uh, with a story, which was of course not torn away from reality, but which was based on expert findings, but was uh, well presented to the visitor. So much to the key idea. We can now move on to the individual expositions. 
here's a breakdown of them. You already saw some of them. I'll run from the basement to the first floor. The old exposition was only located on the first floor. And the current plan is to have expositions on all three floors, except for the attic. In the basement, as already mentioned, there would be the Alžbeta Batory and winemaking exposition, ground floor, the history of Chachtice, first floor, the uh, paintings hall, the uh, aristocracy representative hall and uh, aristocracy rooms. So moving on to Alžbeta, of course, it's the most important chapter of Chachtice's history, at least as for the lay perspective, people coming there would expect that there would be something on Alžbeta Bathory, and it's a fully legitimate expectation. And now we especially talk about the basement that would be focused on the presentation of the darker side of Alžbeta Bathory's history. Uh, the um, the accusations of uh, torturing and murdering uh, girls that she's infamous for, and will take into account relevant research and expert liter literature, and will put emphasis on a serious form of presentation. So, no uh, kitsch elements. You will certainly not see any any like ar artificial person. Uh, soaked in blood, uh, so it would be really based on historical sources. We can work with legends, we will have to work with them because they are linked to this personality, but we will definitely separate legends, legends from facts and maybe also explain how those legends were created. And in this way, we would like to present the history of Alžbeta Batri as the bloody countess, as she's known abroad as well. As for authentic uh, authentic uh, items, uh, there would be less of them. They're small, so it will be possible to supplement the exposition by replicas, if reasonable, and there would be big room for the use of interactive modern elements so that people uh, really uh, get an unusual experience so they can remember their visit and learn some expert knowledge. And this expert knowledge will be easier to digest when the form of presentation is nice. This is the visualization of the layout where the exposition would be. You have seen that already. As for the second basement ex exhibition, it's the winemaking and its tradition. The winemaking history is well documented. Chachtice is part of the small Carpathians uh, winemaking region. Uh, you can still buy Chachtice wine there. And red wine from Chachtice was uh, renowned in the past. In Chachtice, there is a well-known Chachtice underground and uh, this is related to the um, manor house of Drashkovic. As uh, architect Mravets uh, told, it's possible that the underground was linked to the underground premises of the manor house. And we can also think of possible cooperation with local winemakers like wine tasting. And this is the second part of the basement, the uh, ground layout and uh, the ground floor would host an exhibition on the history of Chachtice. It's um, general, it's necessary to say it would not be a complete uh, account of Chachtice's history. We want to focus on selected chapters of Chachtice history. Of course, many of them were included in the original ex exposition like the Tatrin Club or the history of uh, ethnic or um, religious minorities as the Habans and the Roma. Habans will be uh, important. They have not been mentioned in the previous presentations because it was a major religious community. Also historically, it was a community that resided directly in Chachtice. There would also be room for the use of interactive elements in connection with a rich set of usable collection elements so we'll be able to connect authentic 
items uh, in a better way than with Algebra Battery, uh, with the interactive element, of course, will also consider the elements and activities for children and young people, so that young visitors also can benefit from an experience. I'm sorry, I went into technical details on the layout, so the expositions would be up to here. We can move to the first floor where there would be a paintings hall as the first room that I picked. It's not a standard exposition compared to the other ones because it would be a free room that would also be uh, dedicated to other activities, not just visitors coming and looking at uh, the paintings. Uh, there would be less of them. These would be mainly paintings and the center uh, should be uh, left free and open so that it can serve as a room for various lectures, events, weddings. So the paintings hall would not be as demanding as the other parts of the expositions for implementation, but we'll try to select high quality and authentic paintings that relate to Chachkice and its surroundings. Here you can see the paintings hall in the layout. And uh, the one before last exposition should be the aristocracy room. It's a representative uh, room with a wooden floor in the central part in the first floor. And of course, it should be a noble room intended uh, to present the history of, of uh, the aristocratic lineages of Chachtice, not necessarily related to the manor house as such, but in general with the Chachtice castle estate in general, there should be room for the um, Algebeta Batteries lineage because it would be a pity to uh, present Algebeta only as a personality connected with the bloody accusations, but we also want to present her as a noble noble aristocrat uh, who's uh, related to Chachtice history. Uh, the visualization once again where this room is located. And the last exposition or expositions, because there are more rooms, will relate to the life and housing culture of the aristocracy in the modern age of the 18th and 19th centuries. These would be four rooms which are planned as the children's room, or the bedroom or the living room. We'll see how well furnished this, but a bedroom was planned originally, then a library or a working room and a music saloon also including authentic items that would be supplemented by replicas as needed. To sum it up, here you can see where which premises we're talking about. So to sum up my presentation into a meaningful statement, as I said, this expert aspect, I'm in charge with my colleagues Maybe I haven't introduced myself, although Tomasz Michalik introduced me. I work in the museum as a historian with other colleagues and external partners. We'll make sure that the expositions are on a high quality and expert level. And at the same time, we'll find a contractor that will help us to implement this expert part in a way that it's attractive and that would be um, visitor friendly and uh, accessible to a general public coming there, not only because they have to go for a school trip, but because they uh, would be interested and they would be lured by a museum in Chachtice that's interesting, that has things to offer, that has uh, uh, things to teach people in a new and modern way. So I will, I will look forward to your visit and I leave it up to you when we see each other in two years time, whether we did our work well, we're uh, trying our best, so I will look forward to a personal meeting uh, in the place of the exposition. If you have any questions, please type them in the chat. Thank you.
Aj pani Lucia Pastierová je pripojená. Thank you very much. And I see Mrs. Lucia Pastierová is connected now. The electricity is functioning. So I just remind you that your presentation will be about adaptation of Trashkoviča Manor House in Kraš, Kaš, Čachice, 1953 till 1959. You have the floor. Pardon. Ešte si musím spustiť prezentáciu. Tak. Dobre, ďakujem veľmi pekne za slovo. I apologize for technical problems. Originally, I was supposed to re relate to Mr. Janovi and his presentation, and I'd like to describe the adaptation of the manor house and done in the 1950s. This construction period pre prevented the uh, threatened disruption of the castle and now it's as we know it today based on the data official data we can easily reconstruct the whole process of this renewal which was quite difficult and i'd like to uh, say that we see this in front of today so the adaptation of the manor house the decision was made in 1953 on the basis of inspections of uh, the monument board in Bratislava. It was stated that the object is in des desolate conditions, but it's worth to do a general uh, reconstruction. This catastrophic situation got worse due to lack of maintenance and inappropriate use. The first floor of the object was the, the store was the storage of uh, grain and this uh, threatened the lives of the people living in the basement there were 40 people living in the manor house at that time what the monument board says that even the shakiest part is an integral part of the object and any demolition of the object cannot be done without a review by the uh, official authorities. The plan was the following. The first floor should be used as a theater, a reading room or a library. On the ground floor, the Czechoslovak Union of Youth and Soko should use it as well as the um, an advisory center for mothers and uh, an object for housekeeper due to lack of uh, capacities of L atelier the architect Jaroslav Telan uh, was authorized and the district uh, construction office in Nové Mesto nad Váhom was authorized. A rough estimate of works was set. This adaptation plan was uh, divided into three phases. From 1953, the object should get a new static works. In 1953, the first floor should be adjusted along with the new construction of new wing. And in 1955, the ground floor was to be adapted along with the surroundings of the manor house. It was necessary to remove the grains from the first uh, floor. And until uh, 1953, eight flats were to be constructed for families who would have to move out of the manor house. As it turned out later on, both these conditions were quite uh, an obstacle to the early start of construction works. At the end, the construction started in November 1953. There were still grains on the first floor from the letter of district uh, 
construction of this, we learned that on 20th of November, not all necessary project documentation was handed over. And during the, the inspection from 5th of December, we learned that uh, start hasn't, the works hadn't started. In January 53, the vault was put down above the chapel, but without uh, the new roof, because uh, the project was not done. Project design was not uh, design was not delivered yet. The national committee repeatedly, vainly asked the citizens of the castle to empty the courtyard from different places uh, for for animals to uh, to allow it for store of uh, construction materials, which is shocking for these times. In, from these contemporaneous documents, it turns out that in August 1953, during delivery parties of the roofs on the first floor, there were still families living there, 35 people in total, of which 20 children. So these works were connected with negative uh, reactions and uh, emotions from these citizens. In February 55, it was found out that uh, a wall was damaged in the eastern part. And there was a ceiling which was not had not been discovered before. So it was decided to take down the, the wall including the, the vaults. This brought the time delay as well as further increase of costs. The commission during this inspection stated at the same time a complete removal of internal Cluster and it was not possible to judge the, the reason of the displaster, but due to the methodology, it's uh, assessed as the biggest negative feature of this adaptation. In spite of all unfavorable circumstances, during 1955, the roof was completed, including a number of chimneys and the construction was 45, was stabilized. A, a part of cornice was also down, which was in the conditions of the monument port that the district construction office before dismantling the cornice, it uh, checks the, the form. New, new roofs, uh, metal and concrete roofs were done as well as uh, fillings about the doors and after removal of the west, southwest wing, which was in decrepit conditions, the western part uh, was constructed. Embankments from the eastern part were done partially sewage works and uh, cleaning of windows and doors continued. Wooden floors were removed in the ground floor as well as the brick floor below them and after the removal of the stairs new podests were done below the planned new stone stairs for the floor in march 1956 the works started on the site the plaster of plaster was removed and uh, the constructions uh, required six centimeters of layer of a new plaster, which was not planned, and it uh, caused a repeated increase of cost and time. In the summer of 1956, it was necessary to remove the wooden 
wooden scaffolding. In June 1956, the plastic and interior work was done and works were suspended due to lack of labor force. In August, on the concrete foundations below new stairs were done and in November of 1950, the building was emptied from the originally the last inhabitants left. And uh, new works on the windows were then supplemented also by new new windows uh, according to the old each window was specifically measured uh, everything was done in line with the research by monument board 1957 uh, at the end of summer in 1957 it was stated that the course of works is not satisfactory uh, district uh, construction office said that the architect Pelan did not uh, properly make properly design he often didn't come to the meetings it appears often that there were delays about insufficient number of workers on the site. In spite of all that, in autumn 1957, works started in the exterior on the courtyard and uh, outside plaster. In 1958, the colored solution of facade was solved. Originally, three shades were proposed and the alternatives were determined as today after the samples were put to the facade the two shades two shades of colors were selected in april 1958 most windows were installed uh, with the walls uh, yellow uh, in red color and around the building works were done around the building some other the openings were done in the in the in the, the walls for heating it was proposed to have standard facilities standard heating facilities even though in the contemporary documentation it is stated that it would be appropriate uh, the atypic uh, are ceramic ceramic stove which would be adjusted to the to the object it was also said that there should be some uh, ventilation openings in the in the roof doors and uh, windows were colored in the brown and uh, Otherwise, the construction stagnated in June, August 1958. According to the construction diary, only one person was working on the site, one worker only. In October 1958, for instance, construction supervision stated that the, the district uh, construction supervision was unable to ensure installation of all windows and doors, even though they were delivered to the site nine months ago. Uh, so the building approval was uh, set for April, uh, but there were a lot of shortcomings detected, so this takeover procedure was postponed by another month. The building was uh, approved then on 15th May 1959, and its final value was uh, valued at 1.9 uh, million Czechoslovak crowns. The uh, reconstruction that was originally planned for three years uh, was prolonged to almost seven years. And from today's perspective, 
Uh, we can be thankful that it took place because it preserved the building and it can be evaluated as positive. In conclusion, let me wish all participants a lot of energy for the years ahead and the successful uh, sticking to the deadlines. Thank you. Madam Pastyrova, thank you very much. You were at the same time the last speaker and uh, because all the presentations are behind us, uh, there is no time for the Q&A. Currently, I cannot see any question in the Q&A section. So in case you uh, want to reconsider them, maybe we can uh, now have one minute for you to type your questions. Uh, in the meantime, I can read one information by Kristina Lorkova. Uh, hello, Mr. Michalik. I don't have a question. I would just like to appreciate uh, your uh, sound and business-like approach uh, to the maintenance of uh, life of cultural monuments. Uh, I am new to the uh, cultural monument uh, industry. I was addressed to manage a project that was also subsidized under this program. And I trust that cultural monuments can only survive these times when uh, quality and relevant services are merged with a business approach and, of course, all with respect for history. Uh, Christina from the Spish Museum. Thank you, Christina. And certainly, uh, Mr. Michalik uh, was pleased uh, by your contribution. We're still waiting. In case you have any questions and you want to get answers, you can ask them or in case you note down the email addresses that were found at the, the end of presentations, of course, you can approach the presenters individually via email or this conference is being recorded. It will be available, so you will certainly uh, get hold of these uh, email addresses. Madam Tishkova, uh, there was one more question on Algebra battery in the section that you haven't read in the Q&A section. I can only see, oh, I'm sorry, at the very bottom. So I would have a question for the final. No, you do not have to read this one because I got an answer, but there's one more below. Chachtice is typical uh, because they have several manor houses and mansions. Uh, isn't there a plan for the museum to uh, do uh, tours of the municipality of Chachtice with uh, the option of visiting uh, the church? Uh, the uh, priest house, the cellars under the Nadashi manor house, and also the uh, pub, which is also a historical monument. It is a way to keep the tourists longer in the municipality. Uh, there is something like this in Koshite. In Koshite, and such commented uh, tours uh, are popular. I think you would like to answer. Koshite is Koshite, it's a, and Chachtice is Chachtice. In principle, we know about these things, and uh, we are aware that the Drashkovich Manor House is not the only, the single monument in Chachtice. As for repeated tours, rather not. Maybe we can have one, two, three year, uh, days a year where uh, we would focus on Chachtice more but it's also a question of cooperation with the municipality. I didn't mean that the commented tours would run every day in Koshice is also once per month or the ones in two months, of course, not every day. Okay, thank you for the question and for the answer. Mr. Michalik, 
I'm sorry, your microphone was switched on if you wanted to add something. Thank you. I just wanted to comment on the first one. Thanks for the feedback from the Spish Museum. Appreciation is always pleasant. We have to look into the future with optimism because you can always fi find funding. It's a question of personal involvement of the people working in the region. So hopefully we'll be a positive role model. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, currently, I really don't see any other questions in case a question got lost, you can uh, now raise it again or retype it. But as we can't see any more questions in this moment, I would like to thank all presenters and participants for your attendance to the opening conference. And we wish a lot of success to the project. And uh, in this way, we got to the conclusion of this conference. I thank you for your uh, attendance and I wish you a nice day.